Hello and welcome to Smart Annotation. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to get started with Smart Annotations. The first step is to go to our website and download the app. Also, download the sample file. Before you install the app, make sure the rabbit is closed. After installation, you will see that the Smart Annotation tab is added to your rabbit environment on top. Click on User Activation can activate Smart Annotations by creating a new account or logging in with your existing account. Open the sample file you downloaded and create tag settings for this sample file in Smart Annotation. First, click on the Settings button which will bring up a page that allows you to customize the tag arrangements. This page is divided into three main tabs, Tag Settings, Arrangement Settings, and Leader Settings. The first step to customizing the tag arrangement settings is to select the elements that we are going to tag, using the selection boxes in the left-hand box. The elements are divided into four categories, mechanical, electrical, piping, and general. Once you have selected your element, the symbolic drawing area will become active. Right-clicking anywhere in this area will bring up a list of tags that are already loaded into the model and you can select the tags you would like to apply to the element. For this tutorial, we will begin by choosing the duct size tag. The app will place the tag in the default position. You can simply drag and drop the tag to a preferred position. Use outside tag placeholders to place the tags on a specific side of the host object. After you placed your tag into the preferred position, you can customize the properties of each tag through the Properties tab on the right side. You can choose the orientation of the tag on the view by selecting Auto, Horizontal, or Vertical. If you select the Auto mode, the tag orientation will match the host object. If you select Horizontal or Vertical, the app will force the tag orientation horizontal or vertical independent of its host object. You also have the option to not show the tags that don't return any value but turning on the relevant toggle keys. It is worth mentioning that empty tags occur when a tag cannot find the relevant information, and zero value tags occur when the tag parameter cannot find a numerical value. An example is where you selected the duct insulation tag and some of the duct don't have any insulation on. In the second tab, you can choose the family types for each tag. For this exercise we'd like the duct size tag to be on rectangular ducts only. You can also simply search the types via the search bar available. Now that I have selected the family types we want to tag, we are able to fix some more parameters using the filter tab. You can filter out any of the ducts that are less than a certain length in the minimum length filter. For example, in this video, we don't want to tag any duct less than 50 mm in length. The direction filter is used to differentiate the riser versus normal ducts or pipes, in case you wanted to have different tags dependent on the direction of the duct. We can also filter out elements to be tagged based their systems. In this video we want the duct size tag to apply on all systems except the kitchen exhaust. So we tick all the system except the kitchen exhaust systems. You can also read the rabbit filters from your model and apply them to the tag settings using the element filter. As an example, you can create a filter for your ducts that are commented out and use the same filter here for the tagging purposes. The last filter is the alternate filter. This applies to a duct or pipes where we don't want to have a certain tag on every single piece. For example, we may only want to have the duct size tag on every three pieces. You either tell the app to place the tags on account of every piece or on every change of a parameter like change or size or elevation. Once we have specified the tag settings, we customize placement algorithm settings in the arrangement setting tab. As you can see, the page is divided into two parts, tags grouping and masked elements. By default, smart annotation algorithms will group all the tags belong to the same element and are positioned outside of the object and put one leader line for the group. 
However, if you would like to keep the tags separate, you can select the Keep Tags separate here. In Masked Elements section, we would allow the algorithms to place the tags on the selected objects. To do that, you can simply select the elements you want to be ignored in the tag placement. For example, in this exercise, we don't mind if tags go over the flex ducts. The final tab is the leader settings. In the tag leader section, you specify it you would like to have leader lines for all of your tags or allow the app minimize the leaders where is not required. If you select the auto mode, the app will only put leader lines for the tags that are outside of objects and have to placed further from the element. You can also pick the leader types you would prefer on the right side. In the leader size section, you can specify the minimum leader shoulder and elbow length. Now that we are almost done with our tag settings, we can save these settings as a template by clicking on the save button. I name my template test for now. After you have saved your tag setting template, we can export it to any location that you like. This will allow us to share our templates with other users. You can also import templates created in the past or by other by clicking on the import button. Next to this icon, you will see a plus button. Using this item, you can create new settings for yourself or let Smart Annotation generate a new template from your current view for you. Press OK and you are done with tag settings. Now you are going to use the tag settings that you created in order to annotate the drawing. There are two ways that you can use Smart Annotation to annotate our drawings. First, you can use the Tag and Arrange option. This option will place the tags and arrange them at the same time. Second, is to use the Arrange Tags option. This option will only arrange existing tags and will not add new tags. This option is applicable when you already have tags on the drawings and you only want the app to arrange them. In this exercise, we are going to use Tag and Arrange, so let's click on this button. This will make a new window open. In this window, you can select the tag setting template that you want the app to use for placing and arranging the tags. You can see there are two templates here. Shop Drawings and Test. We created the test template and I have then imported the shop drawing template for the sake of this exercise, which is a more complete version of the test template. I select the shop drawing template here. Under the Template Selection section, there are two radio buttons, Arrange Only New Tags and Arrange All Tags. The first option is Arrange Only New Tags. By selecting this option, the app will not move any of the existing tags on the drawings. The app will also try to avoid any existing tags when it is applying the new tags. The second option is Arrange All Tags. If we pick this option, the app will arrange the whole drawing regardless of whether the tags are existing or new. In this exercise, since you don't have any other tags on the view, it doesn't matter which option I select. Now you can hit start to select the elements that you want to tag. You can then use a window to select the elements you want to tag. In this example you want all of the elements in the view to be tagged, so window select the whole area. Now that you have all of the elements selected, you can hit Finish which will begin the process. At this stage, the app starts tagging elements and collecting all of the required information for the arrangement algorithm. The collected information will then be sent to the servers where the AI algorithms will finish the process. After the processing stage is finished, the view will be updated. The algorithm will try to place the tags as close as possible to your preferred locations. It will also avoid placing tags on top of one another or blocking the objects. You can see that some of the tag colors have changed. The reason for this is to highlight the areas where tags are not in their perfect positions. This helps you to review those tags and make adjustments to them if you are not happy with them. There are two differentiating colors that are used. Orange and Red. Orange shows that the leader line of the tag crossed over another tag. And red is where the app couldn't find a good position to place the tag. 
If you wanted to reset the tag colors to their original colors, you can do this by clicking on the Reset Tag Colors button in the menu bar. And select the tags which need their colors resetting. Click on Finish and tag colors will be successfully reset. Also, you can delete the tags in any selected area by clicking on the Delete Selected Tags button in the menu bar. Then you select the area where you want the tags to be removed. Click on the Finish button and the selected tags will be successfully deleted. You can see that the app has successfully deleted all of the tags in the selected area. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section below this video and share them with us. Thank you for choosing Smart Annotation, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more tutorials.